welcome back to another episode of Public Opinion with your host, Pam and Venata. Hey, Venata. Hi. Oh, I, I just, I get happy to see you every time I see you because you look better and better. And I know you have recovered very well and you're still recovering, yeah. but you're doing very I'm well. I'm feeling much better. Oh, okay. that's wonderful. More like that Venata. Oh, good, good. I'm recuperating now. I've been sick. I finally, I mean, not finally, like I'm looking forward to it, but I I actually had COVID and I, I was, I managed to go three years. I had not been uh, tested positive for COVID. And I just, I think my body just got run down. I was doing a whole lot of stuff and it caught up with me. You were me. an anomaly not to have it, but yeah. I believe you did have it. Yeah, I think I did, on. even though I did test it and said I didn't, but you know, I don't know. But this time I I did, um, but I you know I recovered I recovered well I just it, I just was very fatigued I you know I, people had always been Extreme talking about fatigue. how you get that f- fatigue and that's the thing I was just really the fatigued. most unusual fatigue it was right it, it was to the point where you have to get your mind like psychologically prepared just to really do anything because one day in the height of my sickness I was laying on my right side and I said. I got to turn over to my left side so I can get my water and drink some water. So it took me 30 minutes to get my mind right to turn over. I said, now this is some mess. Okay, just some actual mess. And I've been having to pee for an hour, but I can't get out this bed. <laughs> right. Oh, now going to the rest, you can forget that. You're talking about mm-hmm. having to get your mind together. Because once you do go to the bathroom, when you get back in the bed, it's like you got to take about another oh. hour and a half to recover from just going to the bathroom. Right. Yeah, and, and don't not just have too much bathroom talk, but you sit in there a long time too. Yeah, right? it's it, it was you know. it's a lot. It took a lot, but I'm I'm happy that um God blessed me and he he brought me out. I be, I do believe that my taking uh, multivitamins and vitamin D helped me to really fight it off. You know, you know. So I am mm-hmm. feeling much much better. But this week we do not have uh, any guests because I thought that it would be nice because it is March and it is Women's History Month. For us to just highlight some women that we um, uh, find to be phenomenal women and women that are worthy of of talking about. And so um, I'm going to get started and talk about my first person. We can, you know, switch off. But but, um, my first person that I want to talk about is Ida B. Wells. And Ida B. Wells is a a woman that I have really come to know even more about because I was just in a play um, and it was called Red Summer. And it was about Ida B. Wells and how she was, had just really ran this anti-lynching campaign. She was an American investigative journalist educator, and early leader in civil rights movement. She was one of the founders of the NAACP Ida B. Wells dedicated her lifetime to combating prejudice and violence, the fight for African-American equality, especially that of women, and she became arguably the most famous Black woman in the United States of her time. And I came to know so much more about Ida B. Wells as a result of being in this play. She, She had such a strength, and to me, people who especially back in that day and age, um, mm-hmm. who really stood up because she was born in um, 1862 and she died in 1931. So you had to have a, a strength of courage that I don't know if I could have that, you know, in, in this, you know, in this right. day and age, if whatever was needed required that, I mean, I would hope that I would. And there's still the the fight is not over, and and I think that was what is mean. important. Um, but like yeah. you said, character and courage. She had a lot of. Yeah, she had a, she was a, a woman a, ahead of her times in her thinking. Very much ahead of her time, she would definitely have been probably one of those front runners in women's liberation movement. Oh, you yeah. know, uh, if she was uh, living during that time. But she also not only she ran an anti-lynching campaign, as well as uh, she was a big proponent of the women's suffrage movement and women getting the right to mm-hmm. vote. And um, and when women when they marched in 1913 and they were saying still that, you know, they didn't really want black people to participate in the march. And if they did, they want to do, do it towards the back of the, the parade. She was like, uh-uh. And she just 
jumped into the parade, like mid parade. And, you know, so <laughs> she just was, I just, I just really admire her. And I think that it's important for us to continue to tell our history, um, for sure. you know, because a lot of people may not even know who, or they may have heard, okay, I've heard of Ida B, you know, but never looked into. And I just think it's so important for us to continue to teach our children, to, to teach all children about history and the importance of knowing about history, especially women. Black you know, history is not February only. Is not February only. And that's that's the thing. We always need to um to keep that alive. So that's Ida B. Wells. And now I'm gonna let you say it who, who you want to talk well, about. Well, as I I must say, of course, I stand on the shoulders of great generations of women. My, my women and my family have been extremely strong. But I'll tell you, I'm gonna talk about four of my sorority sisters that God sent in my life as a compilation of just great women in one. The first one is Terry. Terry lost her husband at age, I think, 37 with two children. And what mm. I saw in her, her spirit and her ability to recover from mm. such a severe loss was amazing. She carried herself with so much character and dignity, and she was comforting others at her time of loss. And so I have ultimate respect for her. And then I have a sorority sister who faced cancer and she did it without one moment questioning what God had put in front of her. She took the chemo, she took the radiation and none of it went easily, but she faced it and she was strong and she educated me along the process to be better. And what is her and name? I have another soror uh -huh. Oh, Sonora. And then my other soror, Tanya had a brain tumor and she was stoic about it. You know, she was like, I'm going to be okay. She, she didn't cry once that I ever spoke to her. And she just showed me how to face something that was frightening and death wise that mm -hmm. you can do it. And then my last sorority sister, Angela is the, it, just what kindness is in a person, no matter who and what you are, she has something good to say about you. She can find it. And she is generous of heart and finance. She is extremely calm. Oh, that's so wonderful. Oh, and, and so they're my one no, and four. Right. Okay. So that's your first one. It, it, it had levels. Is it one, two, yeah. three, and four? But that you know what? <laughs> I like that because this is so important. What you were, all of those four women that you talked about had strength. You said all four of them. Yes had a, oh, a strength. And I think that's what is to be celebrated about women. Women are, this, to me, the strongest human beings that God has ever created. I mean, when you just look at the whole birth process and the fact that we can do, you know, we can, we're vessels of life. We go through all that. Mm -hmm. we, we raise families. We take care of people. We juggle things with multitaskers. So to celebrate women is just, to me, so important. And I think we well, don't, do it enough and I think that I I love how you celebrated four women who were personal to you they a lot of people may not know them they not be may not be right. you know historical figures but they are still strong women um in their own right and I think that's wonderful and I think as women we need to celebrate each other a whole lot more and, and when, yes. when you say celebrate tell them I admire mm -hmm. you yeah I've learned from you and I'm telling you, all four of those women taught me something. And they may oh. not know that. I hope that they know oh. how invested I am in, in seeing them be successful and how they have just shed so much power to me. Oh, wonderful. All right. So now my next uh, woman, and, and you know, I, for whatever reason, I love, I love strong political uh, women. And so the next person that I want to talk about is Shirley Chisholm. And Shirley Chisholm, uh, she was born November 30th, 1924. She passed away January 1st, 2005. She was an American politician. And in 1968, she became the first Black woman to be elected to the United States Congress. And that, I mean, that, I mean, we take for granted now, like, you know, yes, now we yeah. have Black, you know, female Congresswomen. But once again, Shirley Chisholm was a trailblazer. I mean, and she was, I mean, she was strong and she also ran for a president, you know, right. 
And I, I learned a lot about her in the uh, movie, uh, The Women for the Movement. Uh, she was a bad chick. Okay. <laughs> she was. Once again, and that, strong. And Gloria Steinem, she was with her. And then Gloria Steinem kind of left her yeah. on the side of the fence. Well, you know what? The same thing happened to Ida B. Wells back during the women's suffrage movement. Susan B. Anthony, all of them, they were kind of like, oh, yeah, they liked it. But then they were like, well, we don't want you kind of like infringing upon the stuff that we're trying to get, you know, on. And like That's Shirley Chisholm fun. said, she said she faced more discrimination as a woman than she did as a black person. So she right. had that double discrimination. And especially up in Washington in that particular era, where there's a, really a whole lot of white men trying to run everything. Yeah. But they felt like in the women's suffrage movement, and the, they felt like, like it was muddy in the water to bring race into it. Yeah. Like you're, you're right. You're adding too much more in, you know, kind of mm -hmm. let's, let's do this first. And then maybe we'll come in and get, you and know. We'll bring you on later. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So I, I, I really, I, she's a, a strong woman. Um, that I just think sometimes we we forget about, you know, but especially nowadays, I think we just take a little bit too much for granted. And we have we to, to stop and, and look at the people who came before us, you know. Right. So now for it's sure. your turn. Okay, my next one, and all of mine may be really personal to me, is <laughs> Mrs. Willis. She was my- Mrs. Who? Willis at Central State University. She was the constant woman. I mean, she dressed impeccably. She reminded you of Lena Horne. She was oh. beautiful. And she taught a class, and some of the lessons she taught, I hear in my head oh. constantly. One of them was, you never say to someone, I understand what you're going through. You don't understand mm -hmm. it. I've been through something similar, or my heart is there with you but you don't understand it because you don't have the same set of circumstances that brought you to that point. So she also taught me that you don't ever tell someone, whatever you need, I'm there to do it. Tell the person what you're going to do because it's not whatever. Mm -hmm. If they ask cool. you for $200,000, you don't have that. But you say to them, what is it that you'd like mm -hmm. for me to do? And mm -hmm. what you do before even saying that, is you go and you start with something. Mm -hmm. You bring something to the mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. You do that. You show them that you are of service to them. And I really hear that in my head. Like I have had people to lose people. I go to their home. I always come mm -hmm. with my gloves, my vacuum, and my because I know the first thing you got to do is clean up. But I, I I credit that to her for telling me. Wow. And then she also told us as black women when I go in the room I gotta look good from top to bottom because everybody's looking at me because I'm typically the only standing one out of yeah. people, right? oh so I can't look like the masses I've got to stand out and never be memorable be unforgettable oh well Vanetta I will say if she's the one that taught you that I don't know who taught you that but I can honestly say I will vouch for you in that respect you always um you know, you're very uh, a, a kind and thoughtful person in that respect. You always are uh, think to give people things. You go to their home uh, and you take uh, things to them. And so you are very good at that. So if she taught Thank you me. that, then I will say that she did a, she did a good job and she left she left a lasting impression on you in that respect. She definitely did. And I mean, it, 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 when we go back to reunions and things, she's always someone we talk about. Oh, that's, I mean, but you know what, it, and she's a professor, right? Yes. And see, professor, and your teachers and professors always say, I, what they love most is when they have students that come back and say, oh, you know, you taught me this. So you talk, and it's usually yes. the students that you really may not even think that you had an impression on. I'm sure she oh. wouldn't have known my name if I, I mean, she's I'm sure she has no memory of me, had no memory of uh. me, but I'm, I carry wow. her with me. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I mean, and see, and what a what I, a legacy she has left, and a, an impression on you. All right. So once again, here I am with my my, my strong political uh, women, <laughs> and I'm, I'm telling you, I just I just love this because you know why? Because it's so important for us 
to to pierce any walls and 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 break any glass ceilings when it comes to politics, when it comes to the fact that we need to get out and vote. And so my uh, next person that I have uh, really a, a strong um, uh, left a strong impression on me is Stacey Abrams. Oh, that's a bad shit. <laughs> Stacey Abrams is an American politician. She's a lawyer. Um, she's a voting right activist. And she was an author uh, who served in the Georgia House of Representatives from 2007 and two, until 2017. Uh, she served as the minority uh, leader from 2011 until 2017. And her efforts uh, have been widely credited with boosting voter turnout in Georgia. I mean, they said they they attributed so much of that huge voter turnout to yes. Stacey Abrams and how she just galvanized people, basically. And this is during the whole pandemic. Uh, right. She was out there and, and people were coming out in just hundreds and hundreds of people coming out to vote because she was letting them know this is too important for you all to be sitting back. They are trying to take voting rights away in whatever kind of little ways that they can. It may not be as overt as it was before when you had to guess how many jelly beans were in a jar or whatever, but they still will find whatever kind of ways still to make it difficult for people to right. vote. And it's just still- it's become, We have become lazy after President Obama. And I mean, just a ignorance about voting so, and, and you know it never ceases to amaze me when I meet people who still say that they don't vote or they haven't voted or they only voted once or you know I'm like you got to vote I vote for everything like, even when I don't know stuff I'll try to read it and because I just every time I go to vote I just feel this overwhelming sense of honor and I, I feel you know I pride and yeah. I just feel like it's my responsibility for the people who were behind. In the play that I was in, I had this uh, line that I say, um, you you have to plant trees whose shade you may never sit under. And it's yeah, the truth. I love that line. You know, it's be and those, and that's why it's for people way back, they may have planted. I was reading this a parable today about um this man. And he was asking this other man, What are you doing? He said, I'm I'm planting a tree. And he said, well, how long is that going to take to grow? You know, he said it may take years. So then that other man got drunk. He 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 fell asleep for 70 years. And when he woke oh, up, when, <laughs> when he woke up, he saw a, a, a gentleman that was watering the tree and sitting under the tree. And then he was like, wait a minute, what year is, it? you know, I mean, and the man told him it was 70 years ahead, but it was that tree. And he said, my grandfather planted this tree. And see, and that's the thing. It's like you may you have to understand that that you have to do things now for generations ahead. But we also sure. have to understand and respect all of the people who came before us. You know, so it's that's not so anything important. to take for granted. Well, when Obama won the first time, I took my children um, to the voting booth with me and they missed the first period of school. They were in first and second grade and my other son was maybe in the sixth grade. And one of my neighbors who doesn't look like me was like, well, aren't they missing school? Yes, they are. I said, but mm -hmm. this is a historic day and I want them here with me. And she said, well, I can't believe you would do that. I said, well, let me explain something. There's blood on the booth for me to vote. Ooh, I love that. Me. Blood on and the so, booth. Mm. There's blood, you know it, it yes. so much blood was shed for this yes. right. And, but you had the privilege of not worrying about that. My mm -hmm. children have to see this. Right. Even if he hadn't been elected, they were there to see him on the ballot. Yes. Okay. The and first so I, time that my son I, was voted was when uh, Obama ran the first time. And my daughter's first time, my daughter's first time she voted, voted was when he ran the second time. And I just, I, and, and each time when she, when I voted for him the first time, I took my daughter with me to, you know, the vote. I said, Taylor, this is historical. And Brian was, had just started in college and he was talking I about said how they people, were going crazy down uh, at OU. He said they were running around in the streets and everything. But I said, I just, I think that was just so wonderful that each one of their first time that they vote, they could vote for, you know, a black man to be president. But, um. But yeah, we That's we true. just have we do we have we have a responsibility to to do what we have to do, and then you know a lot of times you, you may have to do things that are difficult, 
and uh, people, you may be met with resistance, but you know, you think back, it's, it's not an amount of resistance that we're facing now that, that people, we don't have dogs turned on us and water hoses and, and people want to beat you over the head with clubs just because you want to go on a peaceful march across a bridge. I mean, the thing, you know, when I think more and more about it, it just, anyway. It, it's uh, so hurtful that it is dangerous to think about. It, it is. All right. So who is your pers- next person? Well, my last one you'll really like is Michelle Obama. <laughs> yeah. And let me see, read mine like you did. She's an attorney, an author, a <laughs> yes, speaker. Attorney's rule. Oh, yes. A first lady and a mother. Yes. Okay. And I love about Michelle Obama is she's every woman. Yes. Okay. When I can just. I I haven't had the pleasure of being in a room with her, but I did have the pleasure of being down at Cleveland Playhouse the day she spoke. I was seeing a play and what those women just radiated after coming out of there. And I was like, oh my God, how how many women can do something like that? Mm -hmm. And I love the fact I watched a special on her when she went into the classroom. She would mother the children and she supported the room. And she told these young black women and Hispanic women that they could sit wherever they wanted to sit. Mm. And now the door is open and they sit at the table. And I just like, oh my God, I was crying because she just filled the TV screen and she didn't have an easy route. She I mean they she criticized everything about her, about her children. And if there is anyone is a mama there. She is a mama there mm-hmm. for sure. Like I, you and I always say, there is nothing more vicious than a, a parent of an autistic child. She <laughs> kind of rivals that because Ooh. she is in there to the end. And she stuck by her husband yes. in a manner which I hope my husband would feel that he has that kind of support mm-hmm. from me. So, I mean, she is every woman. She's relatable. And she is what I would want my daughter to be. Yeah. And and I, I can't aspire to be her because mm-hmm. when they go low, I sometimes go just as low. <laughs> but I know the right thing to do yes. if I follow and, her lead. And that's that's the important thing. Right. And she has a, a certain level of poise and and dignity and the thing. And when you read her book, she was like, you know, she didn't. There were times that she wanted to book. say things, but she, you know, she she knew what the greater goal was. And she knew right. if she had said this or said that everything would be scrutinized or they would, you know, come down on her. All that, even if she wore braids, you notice she never wore braids until after they were out of the, the because she was like, that would be the focal point. I have braids in my hair. That would be, uh-huh. you know, on the news every day. And that, you know, she didn't want to have and she that talked distraction. about the shorts. Yes. About wearing the shorts, how inappropriate that was. She was like, we were going to a very hot place. Yes. And it was, what was inappropriate about shorts? Nothing. Nothing. But what they didn't want to see is more of a black woman. They didn't No, like remember when, when she went sleeveless to the um, oh. girl? That people oh. thought they were going to lose their doggone lunch it was ridiculous but on top of that look at her arms you should show them arms off it was just a sleeveless dress a sleeveless dress and that was it but 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 you know what after that though she had the obama michelle obama effect i bought this top that curved oh (laughs) yeah yeah everybody was trying to i was like i got remember I, i started getting a whole bunch of dresses like that and then you, know, I would okay. throw on a blazer, but then sometimes I'd take my blazer off. Now my arms weren't not nearly as nice. No, no, but no. I was like, but I'm gonna go ahead. Say, but but we were she made us comfortable in our own skin. Yes, she did. Okay, and I I love the fact that she never tried to distance herself from being a black woman. I love the fact yeah. that she made sure that her children had the foundation that mm-hmm. she wanted for them yes. by bringing her mother in there. Oh, I, and I and, love that. I love Okay. That. And, and what I saw in her, you know, and watching the movie and things is that how her counselor in school spoke to her the same way my counselor in school spoke to me. And, and, know, that, and me and, too. Remember, we we both yeah. said that. And then um, when I went to a book club with my sorority, a couple of the women there said they had the same experience where their uh, guidance counselor, I never forget my guidance counselor told me uh, that I should take some classes at Tri-C. I said, are you kidding me? I just 
went to a college preparatory school. My father paid too much money for me to go to this school. You think I'm going to try see a community college? What is wrong with it's you? Just, it's a, a way of under to keep yeah, us but, undereducated yes. and lessen our, our self worth. We are under uh, underestimated and undervalued and marginalized all the time, and and that that has to stop. You know, it, it, has, it to. has to stop. I, and if it wasn't for the fact that I had a strength of character just on my own, but if it had gotten back to my mother, because when I got and told my mother, she, you know, she was like, oh, who is this that told you that? You know, that type of thing. But I'm like, and you know, and I, I wasn't as strong as I should have been. I, I listened to her and I can say that it affected me. I went home and told my mother, it affected her very differently. She And I told you she called up to the school and talked to her and said, if you can go to college, with your blank, blank self, <laughs> I know my daughter can go to college. <laughs> right. So it's it's just, it's a, it's a shame that, you know, we still have to be met with that type of uh, intolerance and ignorance. And then now the, the final person I wanted to talk about, we've had on the show before, um, your son works for her. And um, I just think she really is an embodiment of uh, a trailblazing woman. And, yes, and that is uh, Ariane Kirkpatrick. And Arianne is the president and CEO of the AKA team. And that is a uh, full service commercial construction and facilities company that is based here in Cleveland. And in addition to that, now you would think that would be enough. Okay. Here right. you have a woman and a black woman as, that has her own construction company, but she also, in addition, she is the CEO of Harvest Grows, Harvest of Ohio and Harvest Processing Companies with provisional large-scale medical cannabis cultivation dispensary and processing licenses. And they're located in Beaver Creek, Columbus, and Athens, Ohio. So I really wanted to talk about her too, because I just really, and I've told her this before, I said, you know what, I, I just am so proud of you. Because- She makes you proud know, to be a Black woman. She's yeah. a visionary. I mean, what, what she did, and they put up a lot of roadblocks for mm -hmm. her with this medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. Okay, they, they they did not want her to have the mi a minority stake or have any um, opportunity to do this. And she still faces that. I mean, where the locations, they try to make it difficult for her. And Arian puts on a smile and she continues to do her business and get rich. Okay. And, that, and there's no love. greater revenge than that. Okay. Okay. And, but in another part of it, and I'm not sharing anything that she doesn't share, she's a single mother. She had hard times and she has rose so high and she believes in taking care of her people. Yeah. Okay. Now, I mean, she's married now because I don't want, you know, we don't want her husband oh, to get married. No, no, like, no. She ain't single, but, uh, but, Dan, <laughs> but before, yeah, she but, has a wonderful husband, oh, Danny, yes. now. But, but right. There was a time when she was, a, you know, a single mother. And she, she tells a story about, you know, all of her struggles. And that's what makes, I'm just very, very proud of her. I, I just really am. And I think more um, of our young women should see uh, people like her and know that, you know what, there's, there's, there's really not anything that you can't do. And she's taking very non-traditional roles for women. Right. Not Black women, for women. For women. very impressive. Yes, right. Because, I mean, how many really women do you know who have construction companies? I mean, most of the women I know, I don't even like getting dirty. I don't want my feet okay. to touch no mud. Okay. I see her with her boots on and her, her stuff. Okay. Like, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I bought something on Amazon and I don't even want to take the time to put it together. Okay. <laughs> All right. And it, it's just putting pipes in things, right. you know. But, I mean, she's digging. You see her. Yeah. But the thought of it, too marijuana she's made me more comfortable with the aspects of medical marijuana yeah. because i was one who viewed it very differently mm -hmm. originally oh, so yeah. she's educated me yes and you know a lot of states it's you know it's legal so you know ohio's just a little bit behind the times in that respect but um she's getting in on the cutting edge of it right now so when it does become you know which i do believe is going to be you know legalized oh it's just a matter of time it's, i mean she's going to really blow up as exponentially so but i i hope you all have enjoyed us and uh the people that we have picked I know that you are at home probably thinking, okay, well, so-and-so, I like this lady. I love this woman. I like this woman. So please, that's what we want you to do. We want you to think about all of the women that you admire, 
women that you know personally, women that you just know from history. And then if you know, or if you have women near you personally, make sure that you're telling them, you know what? I admire you. I'm proud of you because women really, like we said, we we have to uphold each other. We can't get right. jealous of each other. You know, none of that. You what you what you have, what God has for you, God has for you. And then right. what he has for her, he has for her. But that doesn't mean that we can't delight and celebrate in, in each right. other's accomplishments and goals. And I know I would never want to have a discussion about uh, strong women without saying that I, I always I admire my mother. My mother is a, 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 a strong woman. She has taken care of my sister her entire life. My sister is uh, 63 years old. She has a disability. My mother has taken care of her every single day of her life with the exception Your whenever she is was a in soldier it. yeah okay. she is she is she's like a soul yeah she, <laughs> she is i mean she and she is another one of those you don't want this parent coming up after oh, yeah. you no. okay she is the epitome I mean, of, a, anything, of a mama bear yes oh she is that truly a mama bear that may be the term bear. came from her but right. she, and, and she fights for the rights of others your mother yeah. definitely has been uh inspirational to me like to to know how to advocate yeah for things right so oh yeah, yeah she definitely wants you to advocate uh she does not like for people to sit back and allow other people to trample over them uh, you know no no and, and, and she's she, told me that when I'm dumb she said now you should know that <laughs> <laughs> it hurt my say, feelings but, but she was say, only what trying is to wrong help with you <laughs> yeah she she's only <laughs> trying to help me as much as it hurts <laughs> Well, that is, that's hilarious. But uh, we do hope that you enjoy um, our Women's uh, History Month and, and our discussion this week. And, and we hope that you enjoy watching us. We ask that you continue to watch us on um, YouTube and Facebook, as well as listen. If you don't have time to watch, you can always listen on the go, wherever you listen to your podcast. So until next time, we will see you for another episode of Public Opinion. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.